stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. Join me right now is UFC middleweight Kyle Dawkins. Thank you, Kyle, for the time today, man. Uh, how's life treating you? It's going good. You know, it's I have three more weeks left of uh, until fight time. So these last uh, about two weeks, the last two hard weeks of training, and then I get to relax the the week of the fight, and it's uh, it's all coming together. So it's good. This time around, you have a full camp. Last time, ten days notice. What are the biggest differences for you? Um. I guess the biggest difference is just that I, I, I have a set schedule now as far as training and stuff. You know, I'm training two to three times a day. Uh, I'm getting my working with the assault bike every single Sunday and, and Tuesday. Um, you know, I have a set schedule for that, too. I have a set program that I, that I received uh, from another fighter. So, you know, everything's going well. But, you know, <clears throat> when I got the call, I was training for a contender series fight. Uh, I believe it was um, in June, and then it got switched to August. So, you know, I kind of laid back a little bit and then we received the call and uh, no, no, no excuses. You know, I, I should have been ready for the, I was ready for the fight. You no, know, it was just a matter of executing. And I didn't I didn't execute. And that was it. Yeah, let's go back to that. Your your UFC debut. I, like I said, 10 days notice. You know, there's so much that you have to go through. It's a whirlwind sequence of events. And uh, yeah. is, was that fight week just a blur for you? Because there was so much that was going on. Um, You know, uh. I don't know, not really. You know, I, I enjoyed it. I tried to just, just you know, let it sink in. You know, I finally, finally got the call to the UFC. So you know, I was just going day by day um, during fight week. You know, it was a very slow week when I got out there. I was like, you know, I was like second guessing a little bit. I was kind of miserable. Kind of wanted to go home. Got got kind of homesick within those first two days. And I was like, now nah, you know what we're here to do work. So you know, I had to I had to put my big boy pants on and then get out there and. Uh, Try to try to get the win. Of course, a tough fight, man. A, a fight yeah. that I think a lot of people remember from you, and they they knew you from the regional scene. There was a lot of talk online about look out for Kyle, man. He's making his debut, even though it's short notice. This guy can scrap. Not the result you really you know you expected, but what mm -hmm. do you think? You know, overall your performance, your analysis of what you did out there. Uh, to be honest with you, I watched the fight maybe. Like I literally watched like half of the fight and I turned it off. You know, I don't, I'm, it, it irritates me. It makes me sick to my stomach. It's uh, something that really, really doesn't sit well with me in my performance. You know, I could have, could have gone out there and been a lot smarter um, as far as the fight went. You know, I went in there, didn't stick to the game plan. You know, our game plan wasn't really working out. So I didn't really switch it up. So, you know, and, but this is what the fight, fight game is about. You know, it's, it's, it's all on me. And that's what I like. I don't like depending on anybody else, anybody else getting things done. You know, I didn't get it done. So, you know, I was very surprised, though, that when I did get the call, how many people were buzzing about it. Um, I didn't really know that that many people knew who I was or, you know, I'm I'm a champ of regional scene. But I mean, it's not a not like a, a big a big thing that 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 you get. But there was a lot of buzz and I was very surprised about that. But, you know, I just didn't get the job done. And it, it, it's. It hurts, you know. It's, it is what it is. But you know, I've I have another um, fight on the twenty first, and that's all I'm focused on right now. Is just getting back in the win column. You know, even though that was a result that you didn't want, that buzz it actually carries into your second fight because you, you you did fight yeah. a guy in Brendan Allen who, man, a lot of people consider could be a top fifteen guy in his next fight. Yeah, definitely. I uh, I you know that's my. That's, you know, my, my girlfriend's really tough on me about as far as fighting and stuff like that. You know, I FaceTimed her as soon as I got done, like on the on the car ride home uh, back to the hotel. You know, she was just like just saying all these good things about it. You know, it, it doesn't matter that we lost. You know, um, we're in the UFC now. I still have my contract. You know, it's not like I lost my contract or anything like that. Um, but I did get a lot of buzz off of it. I was very surprised at how many people were talking about the fight and talking about me. And there has been a lot more. Um, people talking about me now for this fight based off of that one. And I'm just thankful for everybody's support and just everybody, uh, yeah, backing me. So. Yeah, man, I, I feel like that can add to the confidence heading into a fight because some guys, they lose their debut and they just kind of get lost in the fold, right? And nobody's talking yeah. about them during their second fight or even their third fight. Yeah, you know, and, and, and honestly, to me, it doesn't matter if everybody's talking about me or nobody's talking about me, you know, I... I chose this to, to, to do what I wanted. Like I've, cho I've chosen this as a career for myself and it, regardless of what anybody thinks, as far as, 
backing me or not backing me or think I suck or think I'm the worst fighter based off of my debut or thinking that I'm not going to do anything or think or my supporters who think I'm going to be the champion one day and know I'm going to be the champion one day. You know, it's 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 wild. It's crazy. Yeah. Now you get back home. Did you feel like, OK, I need to make some changes or it was just the situation? No, I, I really think that um, I just needed to stick to my game plan. You know, I really mm -hmm. I our game plan was to go in there, beat them up standing and take them down and just kind of stay heavy on top, not, not, not get stuck in any like weird positions or not stay in his guard, which is what I did. You know, I gave up a lot of positions. Um, I ended every single round on, on the bottom. Um, I was doing very well in the stand up, uh, but I myself didn't recognize that, you know, fighting's hard, man. When you're in the cage, it's, it's split second decisions that you have to make and it'll, it'll either let you win or, or, or it'll make you lose. And it's just, it's just tough, but you know, it, it is what it is. It's a learning experience that I have now, and I know to stick to my game plan, slow things down, and uh, just focus on what I need to get done. All right, now let's let's talk about your fight coming up, November twenty first. You're taking on yep. Dustin Stoltzfus. He's a guy <laughs> from Pennsylvania, but he's out in Germany. Do you know some of his yeah. background? Uh, I honestly have never heard of the guy. Um, based off of like the, the outside of the UFC regional rankings, he's always been ahead of me. I've I've noticed that though. And I've, I'm like, who is this guy from Pennsylvania? Who is this guy? Like, I was trying to figure out who he is. And I'm like, I've never heard of this guy. So I don't really know if he's from Pennsylvania or whatnot. But he left. He went to Germany. He trains in Germany. You know, he's, he's game. Um, I do think that he was losing his last fight. And it was just a matter of time until he lost. And he kind of got lucky. But, you know, Dana was uh, Dana was happy that night and decided to give, I think, everybody a contract or at least mm -hmm. four. So, you know, I don't know. But it, it's going to be a good fight. You know, he's... He's uh he's got a very strong jiu-jitsu game, but I believe I'm gonna stand I'm gonna beat him up standing, and uh, I'm just gonna defend the takedown the whole time and pretty much look for the knockout TKO anything I can get. So when you when you analyze his his contender series fight, you just feel like <laughs> it was just bad luck for uh, Pfeiffer mostly. Yeah, you know I trained with Joe. Joe's a very talented mm -hmm. very talented kid. Um, he's going to be an up and coming up and coming soon enough when he heals up and stuff like that. You know he's he's pretty good. Um. But yeah, in that fight, you know, Joe seemed a little hesitant. I know, it, you know, it's it's a big fight. You know, you're fighting in front of the UFC, and he was beating up his body and doing good. I mean, Dustin was chopping his leg a little bit, but I mean, it was just a matter of time until Joe either knocked him out or Joe strangled him. But you know, he he just I, I think he got lucky. You know, he came up on a on a body lock off of a leg lock, lifted him up and slammed him, and Joe just posted his hand wrong and broke it. You know. But I think it was just a matter of time. I also believe Joe. You know, I've spoken to him before in the past, and I think he'll be in the UFC eventually. He just needs to get a couple more wins. That's about it. Yeah, just a matter of time, man. The kid's the kid's young. He's talented. He's he's got a good backstory. The UFC loves him. He's got, he's got everything they're looking for. He has the best nickname, Body Bags. Come on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like some Italian gangster or something, like some hitman or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Now, for yourself, man, you got eight of your nine wins are by submission. You know, the mm. neck is not safe around you. Darts, chokes, rear naked chokes. Is that something that you've always, you know, been inclined to do, even in, you know, from the start? Um, I don't know. You know, it's I have lanky arms, so it's easier for me to slide my arm under neck, under people's necks, or slide my arms around people's head and arm to get a head and arm triangle, or you know, darts, chokes. Darts chokes have always come um, easy for me, I guess, because you know. I don't want to give my secret away, but I kind of let people get the underhook and I go for the choke. You know, it's just a matter of people falling into the trap of that, you know, because in MM, based in MMA, people go for the underhook and half guard and look to, look to stand right up. And it's just stuff the head and go for the Doris and usually it's over. So, but uh, I've always been a fan of chokes. I've never been a fan of like Kimuras or arm bars or anything like that, because I feel like that's, that's more strength based. You know, I can squeeze your neck and you'll just eventually go to sleep. But if you have a stronger arm than me, it's going to be tougher for me to finish that arm lock or Kimura or whatever it is, you know? Yeah, in MMA, everybody's calling for the underhooks. Pummel, underhooks. Yeah. That's like natural now. Everybody wants that's to do that key. against the cage, the key, especially. The key to getting off the bottom. The key yeah. to get off the bottom and key to the cage is underhooks. Yeah, but you could fall into a trap. Like you said, I think, a lot, you know, is it possible that your opponents, they, they might get comfortable in a position where they don't realize that your arms are so long until it's too late. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's what it is. A lot of guys, 
um, at the gym are the same way. You know, they're like, ah, oh, you know, I, I thought after I after I tap them out, they're like, ah, I thought I had the underhook. I thought it was good, and I was like, yeah, well, I mean, my arms are just like too long that they just yeah. wrap around in weird ways. You know. Yeah, I think also uh, who was like Chaz Skelly. He's another guy that <laughs> he has long arms, freakishly long yeah, arms, and arms. yeah, lots of darces and and Ferguson, of course, him. You know, yeah, for the Ferguson. lightweight division. Ferguson is the, is the king of the Darce, you know. I tried to steal that name of Darce Knight, and it's just not happening because he's taking it. He took it, so it is what it is. He can have it, but once I get more Darce chokes than he has in the UFC, uh, I'm gonna take it. So, all right, for sure. Now, on paper, there's a lot of similarities between you and uh, Dustin. You know, what do you think hmm. separates you from him? My size. I think my size and my striking does. You know, he's 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 a good on the ground. He's a basic guy on the ground, but a lot of the guys that he fought in Germany aren't built like me. You know. Um, if you look at the way that he fought in his last fight, he was very hesitant. He was very flat-footed. He doesn't move a lot. Um, he's one of those guys who's very awkward in the striking, so that throws you off as well against him. You know, <clears throat> a lot of those sorry, a lot of those awkward guys. You know, they're they don't know what they're going to throw, so you don't know what they're going to throw either. You know, they don't have a rhythm to catch on to, and I think that's a it's a good puzzle to try to put together and, and figure out like what he likes to do. I've been watching a lot of this fight, so I know he likes to switch southball and throw that lead right hook and then just a left body kick. But, I mean, that's really it. Um, I don't think he's fought anybody at my caliber, even though I have less fights than he does. Um, a lot of the guys that he's fought, I don't, I don't see anything special. I don't see, oh, I don't see UFC vets or I don't see big name contender series guys or whatnot, you know. He, he he's coming off of a win against a guy that, that was making his contender series debut. You know, I've beaten guys that have fought in the contender series and I've beaten UFC vet. So nothing special with Dustin, I don't think. I don't think many guys are built like you in the middleweight division though, right? Well, I mean the champ is right, he's kinda of tall and built like me, right? Kinda of, yeah, 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 you're right. You're There's right, a couple you're of right. us. I mean yeah. it, we're, the good thing, you're either tall and lanky in a, as a middleweight or you're short and stocky you know there's, there's no in between now with uh with the training camp you know what i mean has there been adjustments that you needed to make because of restrictions or whatnot um honestly as far as covid and the gym and stuff like that goes i've been training more mma than usual um you know i train mma now like six six times a week or so i have like six mma classes a week as when I, whereas before I would train MMA on like Monday night <clears throat> and then everything else was jujitsu. You know, it's, it, it's crazy to think that it's switched, but it's switched for the good. You know, I, I, even though having an MMA class is difficult teaching wise, um, I have been training more MMA. So, and I, and I'm actually teaching it myself. So, you know, it, it, I always, I'm a big believer in if you, if you teach something, you're going to get better at it regardless. Like if you teach jujitsu, you're going to get better at it because you need, you need to understand it more and you need to have a better understanding of it as far as teaching it and why you're explaining the moves and why you're explaining the positions and stuff. So, but uh, yeah, I've been training, I've been training a lot, like two or three times a day, every single day. And it's, it's a lot better than before COVID happened, honestly, which is a big surprise. Yeah, that is, that is a surprise. Yeah. A lot of people, they're not even fighting. Some UFC guys, you haven't seen them yeah. this whole year because no. they're just not confident in their training to get in there. Yeah. A lot, I think just a lot of guys are just, they don't want to put the extra work in, you know, they want mm -hmm. things that are handed to them, handed to them. You know, these guys are, these guys in these big camps are given everything. They're given pad holders. They're given coaches and stuff. You know, I have one coach who is Juan Martinez is a Bellator vet. Um, and uh, I have my brother and I have Steve Haig, who is another guy who is Eddie Alvarez and Zach Makovsky's like first MMA coach. And, you know, that's, that's all I need. I don't need it. I don't need, I'm not given anything from those guys, you know, they teach me what I need to what I need to do, and as far as going out there and executing, I do it. You know, I don't I don't have to beg them for extra work or pay them for extra work or anything like that. You know, these guys are we're all loyal to each other, so whatever they need, I'm going to return it, and whatever I need, they're going to return it. So it's 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 a nice tight bond that we all have. Who are your uh, closest training partners? Of course, we know <clears throat> your coaches. Uh, coaches, my brother. Um, I have a lot of a lot of bigger guys, um, a lot of bigger like black belts and brown belts. I have two. Two uh, twin brothers who are pretty big, Chris and Matt Hill. Um, they own Primal Nutrition, which is like a big name um, nutrition store around here, supplement store around here. Uh, a couple other guys that I train with, you know, older guys. Um, but a lot of the guys I've been training with now are all 
200 and above, which is great. You know, I, I wasn't getting a lot of work in um, prior as far as like no gi wise. I was still getting training with the gi, but they've th those guys have actually transferred over into, into no gi and they're they're great partners now. Do you anticipate a lot of <laughs> scrambles on the ground? I feel like a lot of people when they look at this fight, they're like, oh, we, we might see some phenomenal exchanges, you know, some scrambles yeah. on the on the map. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people are thinking it's going to be like my last fight and that it's going to be a lot of jujitsu exchanges and a lot of sweeps and a lot of submissions being thrown around. But, you know, I told myself that I'm never, I'm never ever going to get into a fight like that again. Mm. I'm never going to let, <clears throat> let the judges, you know, screw up a car. Not saying that my last fight was, mm. I did lose the fight. It is what it is. Um, but I'm never going to ever get into a fight like that. You know, I'm thinking long term as far as my health and, that's not good to get into a fight every single time and get bloody and beat up and elbowed every single time. I mean, I'm going in there <clears throat> confident. I'm going to go in there very precise with my striking, and it's going to be like a whole new different level of fighter that people are going to see. So how do you anticipate this fight playing out? Do you? How do you see your you know view your first win in the UFC? I think I'm going to land a very nice right hook and put him out, honestly. I've been envisioning it the whole time. My... my Striking has been very crisp at this camp. Um, he's very, very flat-footed when he stands south ball. He throws that lead right hook the whole time. He doesn't really defend good on his on it with his left hand when he switches south ball. So I'm going to take full advantage, advantage of that, tear his body apart, and then go to the head and put him out, hopefully. And if I don't, then we're going to do dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we might even we might even just see that off the bat who knows right yeah right yeah, yeah. yeah. so you know it's, like you said you know it's those split second decisions you know and, and something yeah. that naturally comes to you it could just happen at the right moment in the first 10 seconds and you're just like okay Definitely. it's over thank you yeah i'll take it yeah yeah exactly um now when are we gonna see you and your brother on the same card do you think that that's gonna happen or are you guys trying to avoid that no you know we fought on the same card plenty of times before i think we fought on the same card we fought on the same cffc card back in like december of like 2017 or 2016 you know it was great we both won my brother knocked out the guy i, I darts choked the guy in the second round so you know there's nothing there's nothing um that i don't like about fighting on the same card as him i just don't like fighting after him that's the only thing because if he fights, if I fight before him, I don't have to worry about my emotions going crazy. And he handles his emotions very well as far as going out there, because you know he's a Philadelphia police officer, so he he's on the street dealing with everything, and his emotions run wild. But he controls everything that he that he can, and it's and seeing that transfer over to the cage is good because fighters need to control their emotions. So as far as me, I I'm fine with fighting on the same card as long as I fight before him. The UFC is probably going to end up doing that for you guys next year yeah. most likely i think i think i think by the end of i think by the end of 2021 mm. he'll be main event and i'll become main event on the card okay okay i really believe now, i really believe it all right now with your brother had, since your since a young age did you know he was going to be a cop um no when i don't know when it was but i think he graduated high school and then he did a couple years in college and then he just decided to become a cop out of nowhere. Like, kind of caught us off guard. You know, I know we, we, knew, we knew that he was looking into, like, the military and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, my mom didn't really want him to go into the military or anything like that. So he said the next best thing is being a police officer. My dad's a Philadelphia police officer. Mm -hmm. So it kind of runs in the family. But, no, we never envisioned. I never. I mean, I never thought he would be a cop. But he is. So. <laughs> Did you ever think you would be a cop since your father was one? Um. Kind of, you know, throughout grade school, I always wanted to be a police officer. I wanted to save people's lives and all that stuff. But as I got older, I saw how much stress is in it. And I see how it's affected my brother as far as the training program, like training schedules and stuff like that. You know, his schedule switches week to week. So it's like he sleeps all night during one week and then he sleeps all day during the next week. And it's just like a pain. So I didn't want to be bothered by that, you know. But as soon as I hit, I think it was like my junior year of high school and I started training. I knew this is what I was going to do. And I knew this is that I'm out of, I could care less about anything else. I could have cared less about school and all that stuff. All I want to do is train. And that's all I've been ever since. Yeah, it's always phenomenal to see uh, 
brothers, you know, at the highest yeah. level of any sport. And it's it's cool to be able to speak to both of you guys, man. I'm I'm really honored to be able to kind of be part of the journey and follow the journey of you guys as UFC yeah, fighters, man. It's cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's great. You know, people <clears throat> when we first started fighting, you know, I, he 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 had mentioned this too on when he talked to you as I watched his interview. Nobody nobody thought we would be doing this. Nobody thought we would be in the UFC. You know, I think maybe three people did. And it was my mom, my girlfriend, and his wife. And that was it. And people will tell you different. They'll tell you that they thought that they they had a we had a feeling that they would go to UFC or this or that, but they didn't, you know. I've had three people in my life that have I had three people, uh, besides my brother, that knew we were gonna go to the UFC and now that we're here, everybody's all jumping out of the, the woodwork and coming out and it's just a pain, it's annoying, like all right, like we get it. Like you're trying to be a cool guy and trying to be friends with me. Like kids, the kids I went to high school with that sat at my lunch table are going on Twitter saying that I was a cool kid, a quiet kid, and that they they didn't think I was going to be in the UFC, but it's but they had an inkling that I was going to be there. And I was like, shut up, dude. Like I never even talked to you, so like there's no, it doesn't make any sense. But yeah, yeah, clout chasing. You know, like that's a very common right? theme nowadays. Yeah, it's it's a big thing, and especially with the whole trash talking thing, it's just mm -hmm. like. It's weird but it doesn't matter man you had the three people no. that are most important to you and your brother believing in it and yeah. now you are here november 21st you're back in the octagon and a big card too ufc 255 in las vegas thank you kyle man for the time all the best to you and uh good luck man in the fight thanks man i appreciate it Take a move in the ring you can hit me with the words you fling.